Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all viewers out there. Today we're going to continue with our session of how to prepare a statement of cash flow using the indirect method. For information, there was already a lecture that I have done uh, which covers on the uh, presentation line by line item on indirect method. So for today, what we're going to do is we're going to apply those uh, line item or looking at uh, whatever that have been explained in the uh, IAS 7 pertaining to the preparation of statement of cash flow using indirect method using the same question that I have used for my uh, questions on direct method which is question limelight. Uh, for your information, we uh, I have already done a video on the presentation and preparation of cash flow under direct method a complete video you can check on my description below and there was also a video on the presentation of statement of cash flow using indirect method in terms of the explanation of line item yeah, before we can start preparing the statement itself. So we are going to use the same question which is question limelight here yeah? and as I said to you earlier to those who have watched my video that the difference between these two methods which is the direct and the indirect method is just in the presentation of the cash flow from operating activities. Uh, as you were aware that the uh, presentation or the starting point for the cash flow from operating activities under the indirect method is the profit before tax, right? And at the end, um, you need to do some adjustment uh, for the non-cash and non-operating items and then do adjustment for working capital changes. And you will see that later, the total uh, cash generated from operation using either direct method or indirect method will be exactly the same, right? Uh, meaning to say that, of course, the income tax will be the same, interest paid will be the same, but it will be the same starting from cash generated from operation. So let's start. Okay, I'm going to do today is that I'm not going to go and focus on the cash flow from investing activities or cash flow from financing activities because the, the uh, a presentation for cash flow from uh, investing activities and financing activities are exactly identical under both methods. So our focus will be on the cash flow from operating activities. So we're going to start with profit before tax. For your information, our profit before tax, if you look in this question, it is given, right? In this question, you can check uh, my uh, other videos on the uh, direct method for the full version of the discussion for the, uh, the uh, investing and financing activities. So if you look here in this question, the profit before tax is 109400 So if you have a profit before tax that you have already been given, you just need to take it and put it here. Put it where? In the statement of uh, cash flow under operating activities. That is our first step to find out the profit before tax or if there is a net loss. If you are not given, I already also explained in my uh, previous video that you can uh, find that, yeah, you can find that uh, item by using some, uh, some workings, right? So you can check this uh, video presentation on this part that I've uh, already given a very thorough explanation, but we're not going to talk about that. You can check that video. I'll put the description below. Okay, we just go on what are we going to do today. So let's look at that. So be, what we're going to do is we're going to put that figure here. So we're going to put profit before tax. That is our profit before tax, 109400 Then we're going to make adjustment on uh, non-cash and non-operating item. Just to recap, these are items that relates to income and expenses that have been included in the statement of profit or loss or income statement when you prepare the uh, statement when you arrive at the profit before tax. And uh, we are preparing a statement today is on a cash basis so we need to go and do adjustment for those items which are non-cash as well as non-operating 
item so we can do the adjustment what we're going to do is we're going to add back whatever non-cash and non-operating expenses of this particular company and we're going to less back the non-cash and non-operating expenses of this company so let's just check and we've already done that workings when we prepare our direct method so let's look at the first item where we have to see that that was already given so we're going to look at the workings under our working for where working for is regarding the first item that is very common which is your depreciation let's see where we get the depreciation i've already put that to be from cell n33 so you can go straight away to that workings if you have your t account workings we did this before right so if you can see here depreciation i put the uh, turquoise color there which is the light blue color which shows that this is non-cash and non-operating item so before this we deduct to get the profit before tax now you're going to add back the rule is reverse whatever you deduct when you try to get your profit before tax now you will be adding so you're going to put that back that is a non-cash expense then we, we will be doing this thing related to the same item which is on PPE because these are all item on uh, investing activities that will give rise to non-cash item here, most of them. So let's look at the second one. So we'll see whether, where do we get this 2006? This is from our working on our, um, that one is on our interest. Yeah, that one is from interest. Interest is a cash expense but there is non-operating expense because it relates to uh, the cost that we have to cover up if we take up loan so that interest is actually related to financing activities uh, and therefore i'm um, excluding it here so when i exclude i will add back because when i calculate profit before tax that has been included the next item is the investment income or dividend income this one can be either income from the uh, quoted investment right so dividend income here if you see we have already made made the workings before this which is our dividend receivable account so you can see the uh, color that i use there will cal will quote whatever a uh, non-cash and cash uh, non-cash and non-operating item so sopple uh, before this we add this 9000 but this is an investing activities so that has to be removed these are non operating item with cash effect so that has to be removed so we remove that by deducting the next one is uh, looking at the next item which are also non cash and non operating item which is related to PPE gain on disposal of motor vehicle or this is actually your PPE right so that 15,000 was already uh, those working that we did earlier in our uh, calculation for our disposal of motor vehicle so it's 15,000 so that has been added before this now we are going to uh, go and add back so we're going to reduce our profit before tax and to remove that non-operating non-operating and uh, non-cash income sorry non-cash income this is non-cash income depreciation and non-cash expense the next item that was also related to investing activities is because in this particular question if you can check the uh, question when i discuss under direct method that was uh, also the case of disposal of investment so when you dispose investment there was a loss on disposal of 8000 so 8000 was already reduced when you calculate profit before tax and that was non-cash expense so that non-cash expense ha it has to be added back so after you have done that there are no more actually because in this question there are only five of them you will arrive at the operating profit before working capital changes so meaning that the step one is to find out the profit before tax step two is to adjust the non-cash item yeah our non-cash item here is depreciation and the, uh, your gain on disposal and loss on disposal and the non-operating items for example is the dividend income so now we're going to look at the working capital changes working capital is just uh, 
relating to the current asset and current liabilities for more detail you can check my previous video today we're going to apply and we're going to look at those operating asset as well as operating liabilities so i have used color coded uh, segregation or classification here so i'm going to look at whether there is an increase in inventory or decrease in inventory the rule for current asset will be the same regardless what are the items under that so we are going to exclude the cash and cash equivalent because cash and cash equivalent has already been taken into consideration so we look at the inventories so there was an a decrease in inventory so we're going to uh, put that in our statement because we need to check the changes in working capital and decrease in inventory will normally shows that you are able to sell off your inventory so that means there should be added to the uh, statement of uh, cash flow under the adjustment of working capital so we'll see the first item here let's see first Okay, there was a decrease in inventories so it is being added because more inventories are being sold off so if more inventories are being sold off that is going to generate more cash flow so you add to that but that is the assumption why we add right and the second one is regarding the uh, accounts receivable so there was also an a situation here it was a decrease now it was uh, an increase it means that we have to go and take more uh, of our debt right so 24,000 here and now it becomes 32,000 right so if that is the case that was a it is not an a decrease but that was an increase in account receivable so increase in accounts receivable yeah and that was uh, for you too deduct the rule i've already put it here for the decrease in current asset you will add for the increase you will go and reduce them for detail you can check my video on that explanation the next item is to check if you have any prepaid expenses or accrued revenue so in our case you have a prepaid expenses which are relating to operating expenses which is prepaid admin so beginning was zero at the end was two thousand so there was an increase in operating expenses so the increase was two thousand when you take two thousand minus zero the one at the end minus the one at the beginning so that two thousand after you have done that there's nothing more for your asset section you can go to your liability section so for your information in the liability section here you have your current liabilities there are two items your tax will not be our case because tax will be disclosed separately after you obtain your net cash generated from for it, after you have got your cash generated from operation but this one you're going to take look a look on at the accounts payable there was a decrease there 27000 now becomes 25 meaning that you have paid your debt to your supplier so when you paid that to your supplier because that is a decrease so there was also a decrease in um, cash flow because now your debt is go going down so it should be deducted because more cash is being spent to settle the debt to your accounts payable next one is the one that is related to another item don't take the cash and cash equivalent so maybe you may have bank overdraft here just do not take that because that is cash uh, under the schedule cash and cash equivalent so we're going to look at this accrued distribution expenses so there was a decrease here again a decrease from 2007 to uh, 1500 meaning that you pay the outstanding uh, expenses right so that decrease yeah, meaning that it will give an effect to the working capital changes it will reduce you have to reduce your uh, the decrease in accrued, uh, distribution expenses so at the end if you total up yeah, you will get one one on zero four hundred and the working for income tax paid and interest paid have been discussed before this uh, where you will be able to get 7,800 for both method where that has been discussed but you can also have a look here I just give you some time to check on that 
So this one, we are just taking the item here in the tax payable, income tax, what was paid during the year and what was the interest paid during the year and that is put under cash generated from operation. For both method, the figure is the same. So after you adjust your working capital changes, now you can deduct your income tax. And at the end, yeah, if you do that, you'll get 100,000. And that 100,000 should be the same as when you do your the direct method. So if you will see here, under the direct method here, for the direct method, you will see that both have the same figure, which is, it has 100,000, which is the same as per the indirect method. So it means that now, um, you have done with your adjustment for um, your cash flow from operating activities and you have determined the figure correctly. The rest of the working are exactly the same under both method direct or indirect. I thank you for watching. That's it. I will see you and I will see you. I'll do more questions on cash flow. Cash me later. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.